a colleague and also current club president of Desert Pioneers and representing today with the District 20 PR team as specialist designer, Soraya Noor Fatima, with a big round of applause, over to you for the lovely training ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much for that absolutely beautiful introduction. Would you like to know the secret of the district PR team? The secret that all of us PR designers use? Well, get ready. You can see that there's this slide here. Something is wrong with this slide, right? It's not good and it's not brand appropriate. So let's change things up a bit. Aha, we now have made it brand appropriate. I've used Gotham, but it's still not great. So let's, okay. It's getting there. We're getting better, but we can, we can make it a little better, right? We can change things a little bit. Now we're getting somewhere, but that white on black just does not, it looks so plain. Now we are getting somewhere. Ooh, very bold, but a little too bold maybe. And it's a little stale. Let's add something more. Aha, there we go. Finally, now it looks like an abstract piece of art, but it's all simple and easy to use. Welcome everybody. I'm sure this was a short intro on basically how you can make simple posters look good without much effort. Good design. Poster making aside, why should you care about good design? Like what's the whole reason behind it? Does it make any difference? Just follow a tutorial. Who cares? I care, your audience, your viewers care. And I will share with you now to attract the right people is one answer. Come on, come on. I need to see interaction to send our message to the audience. Ooh, someone has already figured things out to attract members. That's one to get to the right audience shows professionalism brand. It is my representation. Looks like uh, someone has been reading the brand manual. Market ourselves, send the right message. Good design can inspire. Best impression, readable. Stress, best stress poster. <laughs> Am I guessing this is a read? <laughs> Good way to stand out and be unique. Great, great, wonderful. Looks like we're all getting somewhere and I'm very glad. Don't mind me. So yes, good design does matter for a lot of reasons, but the main thing being the art of visual communication. Good design, AKA poster making falls under graphic design and the whole message and the whole objective behind graphic design is just one thing. Your purpose is to communicate your message while persuading the viewer to act on your call to action. So you can't just, you know, have a beautiful looking poster, right? You need to be able to communicate your message in the shortest time possible between them reading your poster and understanding it because that will then allow you to persuade them to join your meeting, become a member, come to one of these workshops. But how do you do that? As you can see here, you persuade them through design. Don't worry, it's not complicated. <laughs> No, I'm sure there's a lot of people thinking this was supposed to be Canva for beginners. What are you talking about design? It's not complicated, honestly. Design is very simple. Let's start with the four 
fundamental, one of the four fundamental factors. We have typography. The second one is colors. Third is shapes. Fourth is composition. When you think of design, when you think of the recipe behind good posters, these are the four ingredients or categories of ingredients you need to keep in mind. If you can just understand each of them and change things here and there in your poster to make it adhere to these fundamental principles, you will take a lot less time when making your posters. Trust me, it can go from a few days to just a few hours. Now let's start with typography, everyone's favorite. I don't think so. <laughs> we have obviously two font families that we can use in your brand manual. One section, one group is paid while the other is not, it's free. Right, so let's just know what those font families are. You have Gotham and Myriad Pro for your paid fonts, whereas Mon Montserrat and Sore Sans Pro for your free fonts. And obviously, headings need to be Gotham, body needs to be Myriad Pro. I think you get the point. Throughout this entire presentation, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've only used Gotham because much of what I'm saying is verbal, right? So I need to capture your attention. And the Gotham font family is vast. Please don't think for a second that we do not have enough choice. We are spoiled with choice because both Gotham and Montserrat are one of the most beautiful font families to ever exist. Just look at the variation in just this alone. It indicates professionalism. So play around with your fonts. Who knows, you might find something beautiful. But the main point of typography and using fonts is that it allows you to emphasize the importance of certain significant parts in your poster with ease. So if you've seen the Canva workshop poster, you may have seen that I focused, I was the one who designed it, but I focus heavily on Canva Workshop being the emphasis. That is where your eyes should go as a reader, as a viewer. So when you design your poster, keep this in mind. Where do you want your viewer, your reader to see first? What do you want them to read first? Is it a picture? Is it a certain theme? Or maybe it's a special guest that you want to highlight. You can do that very easily with just your text alone. Nothing fancy required. Next, don't overdo it. It is very easy to go overboard with typography and it can create this mess. This is hard to read. Where are your eyes supposed to go? Your eyes are going to the allows, then the emphasize, then the significant parts is too big. It's going to confuse your reader. So when you are designing a poster, less is more. Only change what is significant. Now, colors. Oh, colors. Colors, 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 colors. When I was VPPR, I complained a lot to my superiors that there just wasn't, there weren't many colors. You can ask Alan. He has, he had to go through all of my ramblings. But I'll explain why that's a good thing. As of right now, you must be aware that we have three main colors, loyal blue, cool gray, true maroon, and obviously black and white. And aside from those three main colors, 
you have happy yellow as the accent color. Why is this important? These three main colors you use for the background or they take up most of the space, whereas happy yellow is an accent color. So it should be used sparingly, right? And this year we have been blessed with gradients. So these are your colors. Now don't think you can go wild with them and use all of them because the moment that you do, you're going to make a poster that will confuse your reader. Less is more. With colors, there's two simple things that you need to keep in mind. Very simple. Number one, Limit your color palette to just two to three colors, okay? And number two, use colors with significant difference in contrast. And I will explain this right now with a very simple example. The pole will go up. Look at these two examples. Tell me which one is easier to read. We can see that a majority, well over a majority, 92%, 91% say that B is easier to read. And it's very simple why that is the case. B has two colors with immense difference in contrast. White is much brighter than the maroon. That's it, that's the difference. And it makes it so much easier to read. What about this one? This is a favorite that I've seen here and there. Happy yellow on a blue background. Can we launch the poll again? Have a look at this. I'm sure you've seen some posters or you've probably made some posters with these color combinations. And you might think because one cool gray is gray, it should be visible on a blue backdrop or a maroon backdrop. But you will find that what a lot of respondents also say, 93% say that A is more readable. Why should you care if it's readable or not? Very simple. You want your viewers to be able to understand what you're saying. That's the message. You want them to understand your message. The more time is spent in them trying to read your message, the less likely it is that they will be persuaded. Even milliseconds count. And this is an easy fix. Just have the font be a lighter color from the background shape or color. Now, what about shapes? This is very simple. You have a bunch of shapes you can see there that you can use to add interest to your poster. This is interesting. You can search for illustrations that you can change the colors to. And just something simple. If you can see that I've also added shapes here, these dots. Simple, it adds interest and it just spices up your poster. And you didn't have to move that much, no skill needed. Last but not the least, composition. Can someone see what the issue with this poster is? This popped up on a bad design uh, website. Can someone figure out what on earth this poster is trying to say? Apprentice ships? What is this? Apprentice ships? Is it saying that we can rent ice ships on an app? But then you see here, it says careers with a difference. Apprenticeships, there we go. But when you, when you see this, you've spent like a good few seconds just trying to figure this out and you've lost the reader immediately. So keep composition in mind when you are making your poster. It should make sense. Which brings me to a very simple poster that our dear Arij made. This was, yes, this was last term. So you can see she has used shapes behind the basics of first aid. You can see how that basics of first aid might be the first thing you read. 
and it is highlighted you can see it it's actually the biggest thing on the poster you have also dtm makhlouf he is a point of interest right and you can also see how the shapes have been used in a way to highlight the brand of toastmasters as well and they have been used to highlight the zoom id and passcode not only that you can see if you read from top to bottom and you're seeing this from afar trainers toastmasters club the basics of first aid next thing you see dr mohammed makhlouf dtm and then down you see sunday and then down you see zoom id passcode what the poster is about what it's advertising and it has communicated its message to me within what few seconds so it is effective it is simple and it is easy to read last very very few tips this is something that i used as vppr and it's very simple aside from having a vppr group for all those vppr here also brainstorm and search up you know posters on pinterest if you'd like or other clubs to inspire yourself inspiration is the birth of creativity it gives birth to creativity basically so inspire yourself see other designs and don't think that you can't do it everyone starts somewhere but even people who start who take their first steps have so many ideas don't limit yourself and i hope that you won't limit yourself in this canva workshop as well thank you so much and over to you mc